Has your heart ever been shattered? Okay, that's, that's bad. I understand that. But here's the good news. There's someone that can heal that. There's someone that can put every piece back together and you don't have to live with a broken heart. That, that's, that's good news. What happens many times when our heart is broken is the stronghold of rejection takes place in us. Our heart is broken over a relationship, our friendship, or the loss of someone close to us. Our heart is broken, our heart is shattered over that, and rejection comes in. But I want you to know that we are susceptible to rejection as human beings. And maybe you, you, you've never heard this before, uh, but this is a, a theological truth. We are actually born rejected. We're born rejected from God. The reason is we're born with a sin nature. And God cannot have, a holy God cannot have a relationship with us unless the blood of Jesus covers our sins and we receive that atonement. So we're born rejected. So we are very easily rejected in this life. Much of what happens to us as we're growing up fosters this wound of rejection. And I want to show you under broken hearts, seven strongholds that come from the root of rejection. Here, here's number one is anger. People who have outbursts of anger actually have a spirit of rejection. That, that they have rage in them. They have anger and many times they can't control that anger. So with people that have anger like this, um, I'm telling you that it could be a spirit. So here, here's the second stronghold, insecurity. Uh, people who uh, constantly need attention. Uh, people who are concerned about where they sit in a meeting. You all watch them in boardrooms. They come in and they're trying to, they try to pick their chair out. They just don't come in and grab a chair. They wanna, they wanna make sure they're noticed. They, wanna make, they, they, they need to be recognized. If, if I'm leading the meeting and, I'm, and I compliment two or three people, uh, a person with a spirit of insecurity. I'm not talking about a personality. I'm talking about a spirit. Uh, a person with a spirit of insecurity will come up afterwards and say, why don't you say something about me? It's a spirit. You need to get free from that. Uh, number three is pride. People who portray themselves as having it all together. Let me tell you something you'll notice about prideful people. They talk a lot. They have to give their opinion on everything. Number four is independence person who I, I can make it on my own I don't need anyone it's very difficult to develop relationships with them meaningful relationships they won't listen to counsel they're gonna do what they want to do no matter what uh, this could be from a spirit of rejection so they they've developed this stronghold of independence number five those easily offended these are people who take comments very personally uh, you can't joke with them you have to be very careful sometimes you're joking and all of a sudden you go over the line someone has said something in the past that has wounded you and uh, so you're in a meeting and someone bumps that bruise and it starts bleeding again. But here's the good news. Jesus can heal that. He can heal those things. Uh, number six, excessive shyness or loneliness. Now, again, I'm not talking about a personality here. I'm talking about excessive shyness or loneliness, a fear of people. And number seven is control and manipulation. And I want to talk about this for a moment because every person that I've ever met that has a difficulty with control and manipulation, and that, let me just take it a little further, not just a difficulty, but a stronghold, a bondage in this area, has the spirit of rejection. See, when you have a spirit of rejection, you, you're very susceptible to being a manipulator because you have to control people around you and control their responses so they don't reject you. And, and what it really boils down to is you're so hurt because you've been rejected in the past that you want to control them so they don't reject you in the future. People who have a spirit of control and manipulation interrupt a lot. They will interrupt you in a conversation because it triggers something inside them. They don't even know it's triggering, but they, something starts to remind them in their subconscious, not even in the conscious mind, that of a wound in the past so they got to somehow interrupt you and stop you from talking, especially when you're confronting them. If you're confronting them about something, instead of listening to you, they keep trying to interrupt you and stop you. They also will um, try to turn it back toward you. You know, you do the same thing. You know, you, you have this problem too. They're trying to just, let me turn the spotlight off myself. That's what they're doing. I'll tell you another way people manipulate, crying. They just start crying. Now I'm, tell, I'm telling you the truth. 
And, and basically what I'm saying is, you're hurting me. You're hurting me. Stop, stop hurting me. Stop hurting me. And they're crying to get you to stop because it's not just what you're saying, it's what everybody else has said that has never been healed. See? Uh, and, and it's manipulation because I, I can tell you why, because they can stop. Let me ask you this question. You ever been crushed? Something ever happened that it just crushed you? The loss of a marriage, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a family member. I'm not trying to be insensitive when I say these things because I know they're real, but it, it crushes you. Well, what happens is the enemy comes in and here's one of the strongholds that happens when, when that happens is unforgiveness comes in. Uh, and now in Matthew 18, uh, I don't have time to read the whole story, but Jesus said, how often should my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And Jesus, uh, Peter said this to Jesus and Jesus said, you know, 70 times seven. Then he tells his story and he says a certain man owed and what he owed in today's currency would be about $52 million. And he went to his master and his master forgave him. Okay, that represents salvation. So Jesus is talking to us about a believer, a saved person. And he says, but the same person went out and found someone who owed him $44 in today's currency, $44, and threw him into prison until he should pay what was due. And then he says, what do you think the master's gonna do about this? And I'm gonna pick it up then in verse 32. It says, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you're a wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry, now watch this phrase carefully, and delivered him or turned him over. Delivered him to the torturers. I wonder what the torturers would represent. One version says tormentors. Until he should pay all that was due to him. Now I want you to notice very carefully Jesus tells the story, but then he says something that we really need to notice. Verse 35, so, so, my heavenly Father also will do to you. If each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother, he's talking to believers, his trespasses. So, so what will the Heavenly Father do if you don't forgive? He's gonna turn you over to torturers. Now I want you to remember that an evil spirit from the Lord came on Saul. I want you to remember Jesus said, my Heavenly Father will turn you over to the tormentors, the torturers, if you don't forgive. Um, 1 Corinthians 5, there was a man living in sin. Paul said, turn him over to Satan turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved. Deliver such a one to Satan. Okay, why? Why would God ever do this? Listen to me very carefully. Think again about the Old Testament. When Israel would reject God, God would turn them over to the enemy. Why? So they'd repent. <laughs> and so they'd come back to God. So they would know what bondage is like. And they would not stay in that bondage because if you stay in that bondage, you die. So he, if you're going to not forgive someone, he's going to allow you to be tormented so you will forgive. Because otherwise you're gonna live a miserable life. He wants you to say, I don't wanna live this way. I wanna come back to God. The reason I'm saying this is, you need to understand, you can't be delivered until you repent. God is the judge. Uh, James 4, 7 says, therefore submit to God Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Please hear me. You can't resist the devil and you submit to God. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted? I want you to know that if you've been hurt by someone, that person may never ever ask your forgiveness. He may never get on his knees and ask your forgiveness, but let me tell you who will, Jesus. Jesus got on his knees and washed the disciples' feet. 